there, guys. The brothers back again with another crazy wrestling story. I'm Andrew. I'm the older brother. I'm Chris. I'm the best brother. Hey, as always. Grab yourself a drink, sit down, and we will have a wrestling a wrestling story to go with this. Chris, we're going back in time to one of the craziest WrestleManias in history, in one of the most wild places in the United States. We're talking about none other than WrestleMania 30, New Orleans, Louisiana. Whew, what a show. What a crazy time. Um, I didn't go with you on this one. I still lived up north. But, uh, you know, who, who made the trip down with you? Uh, Mom and Mikey made the trip down uh, with me on this one. And uh, it was uh, crazy, to say the least. I bet so. All right, so why'd you guys take off and go? What was the thing that drew you to this one? Um, honestly, you know, uh, we uh, at first didn't even plan on going to this one, you know, WrestleMania, because at this time, saving up a year ahead of time to go to each WrestleMania, uh, and WrestleMania 29, we didn't go, uh, New York City is where that was placed at, and um, it was... I think about June or July, they announced that it was going to be in New Orleans. And honestly, me and Mikey always wanted to uh, take a vacation in New Orleans. And really, we wanted to uh, go during Mardi Gras. Yeah. Well, he had never been to WrestleMania. Titties, huh? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, I guess so. Well, um, well we thought... What better way? New Orleans, both like wrestling, put it together, bam, knock two out with one trip. There you go, man. That sounds good. So y'all get a car, take off, and head down south, down Highway 55, end up in New Orleans. Where'd you guys stay down there? Well, I'll tell you what. We had, uh, not only did we uh, just head down south, me and Mom and uh, Mikey did. We had cooler and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, we stayed at uh, Holiday Inn right next to Superdome crazy place down there man it's freaking wild did y'all uh, hit up down down go uh did you go down canal street and down bourbon street well, tell us a little bit about uh some of your experience down there uh yeah uh down canal street and bourbon street you know had uh, some uh fun memories fun times down there uh there was this one time down at uh, ihop which is right next to uh, bourbon street um of course, everybody just crowds in there. That was one of the places that stayed open the latest. That and Crystals, because yeah. Crystals is right next to, uh, right at the well, beginning I, well, of uh, At IHOP is where me and you sat. We sat in the back table at IHOP at a booth and filmed your WrestleMania 34 four. post show right there with all the people coming in and everything. So that was pretty crazy. But yeah, go yeah. ahead, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's just everybody coming in, everybody going nuts, you know, and, and it was a completely different environment, honestly, you know, between WrestleMania 30 and uh, WrestleMania 34, honestly, you know, complete different environment. But with WrestleMania 30, everybody was coming in and stuff, and uh, we didn't have as much as much money going into uh, that WrestleMania. And um, there was this one time we went in because we were eating there like almost every night, and we sat down and we ate. And we're about to leave. We had enough money for the uh, ticket. We didn't have enough money for the tip. Yeah. So it was like 20 bucks for a ticket, and we left like a 10 cent tip. Oh, wow. You guys are those guys, huh? Oh, yeah, we were those guys. And not only Man. that, not only that, but we went back the next day and we had the same waitress. <laughs> that sucks. That sucked. I know, sounds like we're cheapskates, but the Definitely. waitress kind of remind, uh, uh, re remembered us because she gave us a dirty look. Well, I'm know? sure you gave her a 10 cent tip, you know, you guys are a bunch of douchebags. Yeah, you? I know, you know, kind of funny. But, um, you know, uh, Crystal's the same way, you know, everybody just swarming just all over the place, you know, lines all the way, standing all the way back, you couldn't even get inside. But uh, once you got inside, you know, you could either go upstairs and sit and eat, or you could sit downstairs, sit downstairs and eat. And um, yeah, it, it was just a blast. And uh, there was this one time, uh, 
we were uh, got our food and we decided, well, we're going to sit upstairs because a lot of times we would either get crystals and take it back to the motel because it would be right towards the end of the night. Like, of course, I say end of the night. That's like four or five in the morning. Right. You know, whenever literally I, the end of the night. Like the sun's fixing to come up. Yeah. So um, we're getting crystals and we decide we're going to eat inside. And um, we go upstairs and we're sitting there. And we look over, and there's Ron Simmons and his family sitting on the other side of the uh, room. What? In Crystals? Yeah. And, Damn. and, and <laughs> Mikey's like, and Mikey's like, ah, you see yeah. that? You see that? You see you sitting over there? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, watch this. And I just yell out in front of everybody. Damn! You did? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ron Simmons is like, hey! You know, of course, you know, you find out later, you know, he doesn't really like it when you do that around his family. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't care at the time. Felt like, and then again, you felt like a douche. Like a yeah. Vincent Tip, <laughs> Damon Ron Simmons. <laughs> hey, who cares, man? That's freaking awesome. Ron Simmons, is, everybody says Ron Simmons is a good dude, you know, good guy, I mean, for real. So that's cool. Getting to meet him in crystals. That's legit. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about maybe some of the something else about Bourbon Street when you're going down the. What's that like? I mean, when was it? This is at the height of the Yes movement, and when we went in '34, I mean, when the wrestling when WrestleMania comes to town, it takes over the whole town, like the whole town, and you know, up and down the street, Bourbon Street was this. Was there still a lot of wild craziness at that time? Oh, there was still a lot of wild and craziness and one of the things that I remember the most was um, about Berman Street and was somebody had this dog and uh, I guess this was how he was getting earning his money or something you know because people do things for money down in Bur uh, New Orleans and he would put this dog and really talented dog and this is an actual dog and uh, you probably saw it in the intro literally having the dog sit, lay down in a coffin, and, and people would, you know, give money to, for this dog to lay down in a coffin and stuff. It would just be 30 minutes, an hour, him just laying there like this, dead, you know, and every once in a while the dog get up and, you know, would be fine and go back and just lay down, you know, but, uh, you know, that was cool. We were, uh, uh, me and Rom and uh, Mikey were sitting I don't remember what the place was, but uh, we were sitting upstairs eating somewhere, and I was eating. You'll probably make fun of this because I tend to eat the same stuff all the time. Wherever you go, if you if you name a restaurant, I can tell you probably what you're going to order. But uh, I was eating this uh, uh, barbecue shrimp soup type stuff. Yeah. And uh, looked down, and there was the dog just laying there, dead as a doornail. You know, all he had to do was just. Put the nail on the coffin and cover him up, and you know. But uh, you know, it was it was cool seeing that kind of stuff. But you know, all different types of stuff you see people oh, uh, yeah. doing that. New Orleans, man, but, it's crazy. You know, it's you know, it's cool. And yeah, they have that voodoo shop that mm -hmm. you know that you can all different types of stuff. You know, it's a it's a blast. So y'all go see any uh, y'all go see any alligators or anything when you're down there? Oh yeah, we went and saw some alligators. We took an alligator tour, uh -huh. and uh, what what was cool about that was uh, they picked you up on on bus, and uh, they took you uh, down to the alligators to the tour and stuff, and uh, they took you in the, in the swamp, and you saw uh, you know uh, what do they call those uh, wild hogs? Yeah, wild boars. Yeah, wild boars. Yeah, they took you to uh, you saw wild boars and. Uh, uh, you saw uh, the alligators eat hot dogs and things like that. That's what they fed them, you know, and they jump out of the water and uh, uh, grab the hot dogs and stuff. I mean, it was, it was, it was neat. I bet. It sounds cool. So let's talk about the card itself. WrestleMania, we've got a lot. This is Wrestling with Webby, so let's, let's get into the Mania itself, okay? The marquee on the Mania, really there was two. I mean, it's a good, good card, but the two main attractions that year were was Daniel Bryan gonna you know upset the authority, we'll finally get his due, and the Undertaker's match. You know, so you got Undertaker Lesnar, you know, and then you got Bryan 
and Triple H and Batista, which wasn't even originally supposed to be Brian, Triple H, and Batista. And the fans united with this Yes movement, changed the whole thing, got the card changed. You know, Brian starts the. Did it start the pay per view with Brian versus Triple H? That was at the first match. Uh, yeah, it started off with uh, Triple H and uh, Daniel Bryan, which was a, a good, good matchup. And you know, Triple H had, as he usually does, one of the best entrances in the entire card. Well, of course. You know, of course. But um, you know, it, it was a r real good match, and it set the tone of what you know Mania was pretty much going to be. You know, can. Daniel Bryan overcome everything mm -hmm. because if you saw the uh, at the end of the match, you know you saw the uh, uh, Triple H attack Daniel Bryan and set up for okay, can he overcome the Triple Threat matchup and become world champ? How do you beat your boys that night? Uh, just with the running knee. The running knee. Okay. So so that happens. Was it, was the crowd? Was it a hot crowd? I mean, oh, was it loud, were, crazy. Uh, that was that. No, they were, they were nuts. The yes on mania was nuts. It was nuts. Well, I bet. I mean, when we were there in we were um, in thirty four, the yes main the yes movement was just get, he just was coming back, but I still don't think it could have been anywhere compared to what happened at thirty. No, it was it wasn't. I mean, uh, mania thirty. I mean, it was from we were sitting. You could say it was almost nosebleed, and it was top to bottom nosebleed. Uh, everybody chanting yes. Just the whole thing. Yeah. It's crazy, man. All right, so you got a hot crowd and everything. Then uh, Lesnar Taker happens. Tell us about the mid card. That was that was practically the mid card, and I mean. You, One of Taker's worst matches, other than that, maybe the Goldberg match. I mean, he it was bad. The, and that match with Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Kane. You know, this they they always say that it's painful to uh, go back. That you you watch the you listen to the wrestlers. Uh, they say it's kind of painful to go back and watch and, and stuff like that. Uh, it was uh, kind of painful to be in the Superdome and watch that uh, that matchup. Uh, from start to finish, honestly, it was very slow. The crowd was dead. No one cared, really. I mean, until it was over, then they cared. Yeah, I mean, and then Taker couldn't really move, you know, that well, you know, and you know, at, at first, you know, you feel like, okay, it's just some storyline they're building. You know, at first, it's like a storyline. Lesnar coming out and just destroying. Him. You know, and then you find out while well, he has a concussion and stuff, and he doesn't even remember the match itself. You know, they they tell that in a documentary. You know, um, so it's it was very uh, hard to watch. I can say that, and uh, I really won't even go back and watch that match. If I go back and watch Mania 30, I will skip over that match because I mean it's just kind of puts a drag on it and honestly it's good that they had that triple threat matchup at the end because uh, it really boosted Mania 30 uh, than what it would have been if they would have just kept the streak. Yeah yeah and, and that must have been really upsetting for you you were probably just like the meme with the black guy on there doing the doing the crazy face yeah, when that exactly. happened. Yeah, I can see you probably did the same thing with Taker losing. Because, I mean, like, that's been your favorite, you know, ever since Macho Man wasn't, you know, then that was your favorite for your whole life. I mean, like, and the crowd didn't even give that much of a thank you, Taker, or anything response when he was leaving. You know, nothing like Mania 33 or anything like that. I mean, it was it was pretty dead that night for uh, that street breaking. But then... You know, Vince knew what he was doing, I guess, because then he put on the, later on that night, we had the Daniel Bryan, Triple H, Batista, Triple Threat. Bryan goes over, taps out Batista to win it. Um, what, a, you know, what was that like? Everybody nuts. Everybody going absolutely crazy. Daniel Bryan holding both belts over his shoulder, uh, head, going yes when the mat, when they went off the air. I mean, that's about as best as I can say it. And everybody was standing on 
standing up chanting yes the entire arena. Would that would you say that was the in the Superdome? I mean, just period. Was that the biggest pop you've ever been a part of, or was there one bigger? Like live, you know, where you were there. That was probably one of the biggest. Yeah, if not the biggest, it was up there. Huh? Yeah, that was nuts, man. Sounds like a cool story. Seeing alligators. Um, so, did you go to uh, the wrestlers? You know, what hotel were you at? You were at Holiday Inn. But did you ever go try to find the wrestlers where they were at or whatnot? Oh yeah, we we went and tried to find the. Well, what happened was we were on Bourbon Street and we were uh, talking and we had just saw Heath Slater. One well, man band, I got kids, baby. Uh, at some bar, uh, he was about to walk into one of them, and uh, next thing I know, there's these group of guys, and they're like, "Oh my God, we know where all the wrestlers are. Oh my God, we gotta go, right? We we, we gotta go. We we know the wrestlers' hotel." And all of a sudden, you see these group of fans just dashing to it, and like he's like, "Oh, you want to go, right? You know, because he's." He's had a few drinks and yeah, this kind sure, of stuff. Yeah. You know, he's like, no, we got to go. Come on, baby. And he just dashes off, you know. And I'm like, all right, I got to go. All right, <laughs> let's go. Right? So we go and, and all this stuff. And we find the uh, wrestler's hotel. And they have it all blocked off and everything. And next thing you know, we see uh, we see uh, Triple H walking in. He gets out of his, ho uh, his limo. And... Stephanie comes over and she's signing autographs and William Regal comes over and he takes pictures and stuff and uh, Seamus gets out of his, mo uh, out of his uh, limo and he's like Bella and all this stuff and of course you know and, and there's Cesaro and all this stuff and there's this bar there, there's this kind of a gas station liquor store type thing right down the street from it yeah and uh, Ricky uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, uh, who wasn't Alberto Del Rio's uh, ring announcer at the time, he was part of the Spanish commentator uh, at the time, went in there and like he's like, oh, we gotta come down here, we gotta, we gotta meet this guy, come on, come on, we'll rush down there, and uh, so we met him in the uh, in the liquor store. You know, so it, it was a blast. I mean, it, it, it was it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a great trip. All right, man. I think that's all the time we got on today's WrestleMania stories with the Webster Brothers. Uh, that was a cool story, man. I'm looking yeah. forward to uh, doing this again. All right, y'all, stay tuned for, uh, keep checking out the channel. Stay tuned for some other uh, wrestling stories. Also, Backyard Beatdowns will be coming up, Backyard Beatdown 4. If you are interested, check out Kicking It With Coach Webb. That's my stories about biographies and different things, people that I find interesting. It's kind of like a poor man's Joe Rogan. Um, I, guess, I guess until we see you next time, huh? Yep. Catch you all on the other side.